Hello everyone. It has been so wonderful to see so many of you in recent weeks at events like the Course Redesign Institute and of course new faculty orientation. Teaching Day, which was held just last week on September 5th, was also a great success. We had instructors, teaching assistants, marker graders, and course coordinators joining the CPI team in the Rankin Family Pavilion for a morning of professional development. With the new term now well underway, I'm reaching out to share information with you about a new tier of support for educators who wish to embrace open educational resources, to provide a brief reminder of some recent changes to the university policy on undergraduate student evaluation, and to give you advance notice of a new directive from the Ministry of Colleges and Universities concerning information about course materials that will soon be required to be included in course syllabi. But first, I really want to thank the many faculty members, professional librarians, instructors, and other educators who participated in CPI's survey of your professional learning needs. It was conducted earlier this summer, and your feedback is invaluable. It will help us to shape our offerings and better allocate our limited resources to better meet your needs. In the interest of full transparency, we will share key insights from this survey on the CPI website. Second, as many of you will know, for the last year and a half, we have been running a new grant program here at Brock aimed at supporting educators who wish to displace the often hefty cost of commercial textbooks by adopting open educational resources in their courses. OER are really any teaching and learning resources that are published with an open Creative Commons license. And this permits them to be freely reused, revised, remixed, retained, and redistributed this OER Adoption Grant Program has been jointly funded with the Brock University Student Union, and it provides a grant of $500 to individual faculty members or $1,500 for teams of faculty from a department who commit to the ongoing adoption of OER for a given course. We have been delighted to see the uptake of this new support by instructors across our various faculties, and so I'm especially happy to share that as of this September, we are establishing an additional tier in our OER Grant Program, one designed to support the adaptation of OER. The new OER Adaptation Grant Program is designed to support the substantive adaptation of open educational resources, such as open textbooks, in order to make these suitable for adoption at Brock. It provides grants of up to $6,000 for faculty members. This includes $2,000 in funding for the educators and up to $4,000 in project funding. Now, adaptation of OER, of course, can take many different forms. It may include things like localizing the OER to reflect the local context, whether it to be in line with local program learning outcomes, or even to include local or regional data and examples, cultural references. It could be updating OER to reflect contemporary research developments. It could be remixing one or more OER, such as embedding openly licensed videos or simulations within an open textbook. Details of this new program will soon be posted to the library's OER grant webpage. Third, I want to remind you all of some of the key changes to the undergraduate evaluation policy that were approved by Senate in May of this year. These include stipulations that a single item cannot account for more than 50% of the final grade, and that the final course grade shall reflect grades from no fewer than three assessments. Note that neither of these two requirements apply to thesis and independent or directed studies courses. In addition, at the beginning of the course, students need to be advised in writing of several things. The assignments required of them, the due dates for such assignments, any penalties to be levied for the late submission of an assignment, the relationship between attendance or engagement and their course grades, the date for withdrawal without academic penalty, and the date by which they may expect to receive notification of 15% of their final grade whether or not a phrase matching system or other assessment software will be used, whether a final or progress examination will be scheduled, if that examination is on campus, and any assessments that are deemed mandatory or otherwise have an impact on the final grade beyond their percentage weight. Finally, and mindful that the course syllabus plays such a critical role in communicating information like this to students at the start of the course, I also want to give you advance notice of a new directive we have received from the Ministry of Colleges and Universities. This is in line with the Strengthening Accountability and Student Supports Act of 2024. This directive aims to ensure that students and their families can find information on educational costs with ease, and it aims to improve consistency across the sector in publishing educational costs and leveraging best practices. 
The directive requires annual reporting to governing boards and to the ministry and includes a stipulation that the course syllabus must include information about the cost of textbooks and other learning materials, whether these are mandatory or optional. This requirement is effective for all courses beginning in January of 2025. The directive also, of course, encourages faculty to consider the use of open educational resources to help make post-secondary education more affordable to students. We are currently reviewing this directive to fully understand its implications, and you can expect further communication and guidance about this new ministry requirement in the coming weeks. That's it for me for now. I want to wish you all a wonderful start to the term, and I hope to see you in person at one or more of the events during the upcoming homecoming weekend. Thank you.